Hey guys, welcome back to Juno New Origins. My name is Twitch here and we are playing a full automation playthrough of this beautiful career mode game here. And we are currently under contract to our friend Buck Marshall, who would like us to take a small payload on a suborbital jaunt straight out the top of the atmosphere and right back if we could. This is a mission that we can do and no problem, it is a set of criteria that we have met before but there are two changes. One is a hardware change, you might notice the pointy nose cone on the top of this craft, that is a the payload for Buck. And the second is of course software wise. You see two big blue blocks of code there that are checking the amount of fuel that we have in our stages. The entire time that we have more than zero fuel we are writing out to the flight log the amount of fuel we have in our stage. Uh, then when we run out of fuel we activate our stage and begin the process again. And I think we can run this as a parallel process. So far we've just been guessing that after a certain amount of maneuvers that will be about the time we want to be checking the amount of fuel we have in our stage. But with the we don't need to do that we we can have a second uh, process checking to see how much fuel is in the tank running parallel with the actual flight program that decides where we're pointing completely independent of each other so we can make this happen with a new orange block the orange blocks are generally the uh, start of a small program here uh, this program is started by the gray block the gray block will send out a ping to the system at wide looking for something that will receive this message with the same name in the here i've called it fuel check because that is what i'm going to be doing the next job, of course, is to try and separate out all of the fuel structure from the flight plan. That's relatively easy. We just grab everything from the blue blocks onwards. Uh, of course, there is a little bit of a pitch command in there. And then I've got to try and make a decision about where I'm going to send the broadcast. Do I do it right at the beginning and start the fuel check straight away? Or do I actually, as I end up settling upon, start the rocket first, get us off the ground, and then start the fuel check, and then take other, other processes into consideration? Uh, so now we can get rid of the excess. There is absolutely no need to have any of that and the, the whole system is pretty much built and done at this point I, I throw a little bit of a, another broadcast on the end so that when one stage finishes it could check for the next stages of fuels uh, and then of course that will start the parachutes off very very important all of this chatter has taken us to the very, very edge of space. We are at 75, 76, 77 kilometers. I believe 75 was indeed the cutoff point for the atmosphere. As you can tell, we are now tumbling despite having the fins on the back of here. Uh, after a little while, the program the autopilot decides to fire its final stage and trigger the payload that we that buck marshall wanted us to fire up here and it, the, the game is like okay great job you can now scrap this and move on and i'm like yes yes my friend of course we can just move on if we want but i i'm feeling invested in this little hunk of scrap metal that we've got here and i'm very interested to know how it will fare in its re-entry uh we've gone higher and further than ever before so of course we need to be able to make sure that we can re-enter here the main way that i'm going to try and be uh surviving their their re-entry the heat the the absolute carnage that is the friction of re-entry is just keep trying to pull up so that re-entry takes as long as possible this does well the parachutes pop and uh at 13 kilometers up it's a little bit of a way to be waiting here thankfully we do have the power of time acceleration we've got it up on the top right and of course in the edit i am also doing so but somewhere around five kilometers the game does something that i uh, wasn't really expecting it is something that was shown on the last video uh, it just cuts the parachutes i i was very very um perturbed by this i didn't expect this to be a thing that was going down we end up hitting the water at about 130 meters per second which is very 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 fast it's much faster than i would ever want my rockets hitting the water now whilst rockets are the life and blood of a space program they do not make a space exploration program indeed there are more facets than just the rockets uh, we have the the jump to do one of the advantages of having a huge ramp on the edge of the cliff is you can fly without much effort I'm all about flying without effort go airborne for more than 150 meters after jumping from the end of the runway of course we're gonna go do that of course thankfully that should be relatively easy in fact i'm not even sure if we want to be here but the first thing i'm going to do new craft let let's just do a thing first thing we need to do of course is change the command disk properties from rocket to plane uh, and then just start building a basic fuselage we don't want stage we want some fuel tanks right there uh, and then we're going to throw some wings on the outside uh, wh where's that well that is 90 degrees oh that didn't feel like 90 degrees when I was placing it down uh, and then is there something that looks like a tailplane I guess we'd put another fuel 
tank down. Let me bring that down a little bit and this time put a fin on there. Uh, and that should, I mean, that does, from this angle, it looks like the fin points up and the wing points down. That, that just feels horrific to me. Okay, this looks like it might fly, and I think the only thing I'm going to do, if I can remember where the commands are, uh, is to set craft pitch to 15. Like, so, something like that. Wait, is 15? Well, yeah, 15 is up from, from, the, uh, from the horizon, so that would be good. And I'd like to put a heading on there, but right now I don't know where we want to be pointed. So at the moment, this will do. Let's see if we can... Nearly, nearly got the wrong pad. Uh, this will do, and uh, let's see if we can just roll on out of there. Uh, 150 meters, that's all we need. That is all we need. So it turns out I lied. The thing that I need to be able to do is to turn, look at this, the motor on just for a little bit to start us rolling down that way. Uh, I would also like the nav ball up and then we'll, we'll make sure that we're, no, what direction is that? Look at that. That heading needs to be like 50 degrees, something like that. Does that look like it will keep us on a, a good setting? Okay, so that's, that's good to know as well. Honestly, though, I don't know how to get the landing gear rolling from the autopilot's point of view. Let's undo this. So somewhere there's going to be the power to turn the torque on. We can figure that out. That'd be great. Turns out this is enough. This is all we actually need. If I click on the landing gear at the front here and come into its properties, look at the wheel settings. There's a torque line somewhere. It was actually here in the landing gear. Uh, you need to turn this up uh, to be able to to get it uh, get it rolling, and then you just use the pitch command, uh, not the pitch, sorry, the throttle command to turn the the wheel on and off. Indeed, as we are seeing here, it takes just a little bit of time for it to turn the uh, the throttle up, and we are slowly but surely building a little bit of speed here. In fact, I'm going to uh, time accelerate our way to the edge of the runway. Uh, now, I was wondering whether there was other things we could do for this particular craft. I mean, we could, we could throw an engine on the back here and give ourselves a big boost. Uh, another thing was, oh no, I don't I don't want to I don't want to play around with this this this. There we go. This should have been just. 15 degrees that's what we asked it to be set at of course whilst we're on the floor there's only so fast that we're actually going uh, sorry so high that we're actually going to be able to pitch up uh, and it feels like maybe 50 degrees wasn't the ideal point of view but we've gone uh, angling down uh, that already is enough we we should have we should have asked the uh, the ai to pull up the landing gear there but we seem to be able to hold ourselves on a steady flight let's see what speed we're actually traveling at that was pretty fast there uh, and indeed there is only really one end to this uh, unless the landing gear are going to help oh 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 uh, this might i haven't asked it to put the brakes on at any point at no point okay this is this is gonna get oh, 15 degrees i really need to turn that off so that i can't mess with it so 15 degrees is what we're trying to hold uh i don't i don't know whether we're going to survive this or whether I mean, the fact that the wheel, the wings, sorry, haven't already broken off uh, is very encouraging for me. Yeah, looking good. Looking look, well, we get we get to recover the test vehicle as well. What what a what a rarity in today's space program. Is are we are we coming to the point where I can go end flight recover? Thank you very. Oh, and we got some money for it. Okay, that was a lot of fun. We're going to do one of those contracts an episode. As you can see, the next one, Like a Bird, is to follow a bunch of waypoints. That sounds uh, an interesting challenge. But to now, right now, we're going to go for the going sideways. We need to land 500 kilometers away from the village. Also, if we can get above the atmosphere and try and go faster than a kilometer per second, I think we can do both of these in one mission. So I'm going to accept this and accept that. Uh, called this the one small jump so that we can save it. And I think I'm just going to super supercharge the staging up let's load the staging up okay maybe we're going a little bit too far here one seven uh plus another 12 there's, there's 19 engines is 19 engines too many engines i have saved this so we're totally capable of now swapping all of these out for the liquid fuel and see see what we get there uh let's take a note of the the numbers 4.69 nice uh and a to weight of 1.7 no, no, it, it's ridiculous. It like it does it doesn't. The delta V is two two kilometers short. 
Uh, no, no, the Delta V is a little bit more, but the uh, the starting to weight ratio is terrible. And we, we've already blasted through the price. Okay, may, maybe no. May, maybe that wasn't a ridiculous number of things. So rocket with a ridiculous number of engines. We've got to go over a kilometer a second up in space and we've got to try and crash at least 500 kilometers away. Uh, this should be relatively simple. And whilst we're doing that, I would like to take this moment here to thank the people who make this flight possible. That's right my patrons scrolling up the screen right now you will see a list of names a list of names of the guys and girls that go along to patreon.com forward slash twitchy and made a monthly monetary donation in appreciation for the work that we put in here it really is with the help and support of you guys that i can do such things as uh, keep my computer up to date and running such games so really from the very very bottom of my heart thank you thank you so much we're currently cruising about the speed of sound, just passing through five kilometers up. The solid rocket motor down that is powering this boost stage is going to be burning its entire fuel load, even if the autopilot was to give the order for the throttle to turn down to zero. I have indeed set up such a condition, realizing that if I just carried on trying to go as far as I could uh, sideways as fast as possible, uh, the re-entry was starting to cause a little bit of trouble. The, uh, the situation that we had with the previous flights was already pushing the parts to their absolute limit uh, and we were really only able to save ourselves by the rudders trying to pull us out of a nosedive. You can see that the throttle has turned off there that means a condition has been met the condition is of course that our apoapsis the highest point of our orbit has gone over a hundred kilometers uh, but of course the solid rocket motors will burn they will not stop so we've got to be left with somewhere around an apoapsis of 150 kilometers i don't know exactly because we have not opened the map yet that is something in the tech tree that we are able to do uh, staging once again goes incredibly well but of course we've met all conditions that are I want to meet for this flight i feel like we're going to make it more than 500 kilometers away now we just need to worry about the perils of re-entry Looking around at the area around us, it's nice to look at the planet, but it's also nice to look at the stars up above and wonder what what mythologies, what what stories they used to tell each other about this, especially as we like rip our way through this at as high a time acceleration as we can. Though I was having a little of a, bit of a weird situation where occasionally it wouldn't actually let me hold on to time acceleration for a ridiculous amount of time. It was probably because most of the time it thought I was trying to crash and it would let me accelerate for just a few seconds and then just stop again. Anyway, we're coming down to the top of the atmosphere and the program is starting to enact a little bit of a safety feature here. I've noticed that we're coming in very, very hard, very, very fast. So we're pointing into retrograde and asking to slow down until we're down to one and a half a thousand meters per second. Uh, and then something goes incredibly wrong. I should have killed the engine and pointed 19, uh, 15 degrees above the uh, prograde. I just went 15 degrees above the above the horizon we were already looking at, which was actually backwards because we were trying to slow down. The aerodynamics dragged us around. We ended up burning towards the floor, trying to add on to our speed. Thankfully, we didn't have a great amount of fuel, so that wore out pretty quickly, and the parachutes were capable of catching us in the atmosphere. That was pretty cool. Something that wasn't great is, once again, I forgot to change the setting on the parachute, if it is, even is a setting on the parachute. I've just assumed it's something that I can find out there uh, that says when it will cut the parachutes for us. I'm really not not in love with this particular feature and I, I don't know what point it, it got set uh, I would like it to cut when we're at the floor ideally that that would be ideal uh, somewhere about now would have been the ideal point for the parachutes to cut but anyway it turns out even smashing up the rocket in the way that we have uh, it counts towards the towards the contracts so we got our money we've made our progress job is a good one Okay, a few changes we're going to save to the craft here. So look here, we, we set uh, throttle to one. Uh, we need to turn that off again at some point. That was that was definitely an issue when we were burning at the ground. And also another issue we had with burning at the ground is here. This setting craft pitch to 20. Uh, I wanted us to look 
forward 20 degrees but because we've been looking retrograde here which is backwards um we we were just had a heading pointing backwards and tried to go 20 degrees that that didn't help us at all so i'm actually ooh, gonna steal this heading from here we're still going 315 degrees you know what i'm gonna put this on zero because that means we're then going eastwards and the planet spins eastwards so when we're trying to launch into orbit we're getting thrown by the planet what a great idea yeah very very good pat, pat on the back okay and the other thing i want to change of course is these parachutes oh my god why did five kilometers is not a, a, a healthy distance to be dropping anything on the floor from like we, we, we just need to make sure that isn't happening anymore oh it's because they're actual drogues which the fine fine but they do they do a good job just being regular parachutes for me so i'd like them to to just kind of stay there auto cut density okay so if we want to be lower the air will be denser because all the other air is pushing on top right like that that's that's something that i've learned in in physics right uh so if we push it i mean I don't know whether one kilogram per meter cubed. Oh, one point. Oh, look, it, it gives us a distance. Oh, that's great. Um, maybe cutting them at about a hundred. I, I thought we were going to have to just try and guess an air density there, but it, it really does tell us what height above sea level, because that's where air densities come from, right? Sea level. So we'll, we'll go for five, three hundred meters. Let's go three, three hundred meters. Okay. So that's all of that. Let's save this. Uh, the only other career thing we can do now is to uh, to get into orbit for uh, Professor von Prickelspack. Uh, but I, I don't want to do that. That's that's next episode. So let's instead do the fast roller. We've got to stay on the ground. We've got to go more than 50 kilometers an hour, which is 13.9 meters per second. I think we can aim for at least 14 meters per second and hold that speed for five seconds. Now, we do know that on the very outside, I had a new craft, bam, thank you. Uh, we do know that outside there is a, launch, a, um, a runway, and a runway sounds like a good place to get a lot of speed up for a long time. You know, let's start with one small jump, and um, I'm just going to kind of rip everything off. We don't want the wings. We don't. I'm going to keep the back stabilization because I think that's going to work. Uh, but I also ooh, spin the camera around. I also I think would like to try a new type of wheel. This bad. Oh, it's oh, it's oh, it's really, it's really small. <laughs> so every, everything everything comes with a little slide uh, a size slider there uh this says it's going the wrong way look this is reversing I, I don't want that okay so that looks pretty good if we then mirror it out like so and then i found a whole bunch of like what i call gizmo parts yeah stuff like this where we can just kind of lower that down oh it almost looks like a car okay both of them come with some torque preset and um i think this same oh we, we we do know we want to bring that down a degree uh, i think the same same program for the small jump uh, this craft is one or more issues and cannot be launched try launching again after correcting the issues what's our issues it's too wide for the selected launch location oh wait, are you kidding me oh, it's cause, it's cuz i'm trying to launch from the pad not the runway <laughs> We didn't give this craft a countdown. We definitely need to give it a countdown. But three, two, one, we are rolling. Now, are we going to be able to get fast enough to be able to meet the objectives? Uh, did we not Did we not take the no active contract? Wait, I thought I took a contract. No, I must have just clicked on it and looked at it. There we go. Also added a small countdown loop uh, for, for I from five to one, counting down minus one each time. We wait one second, display the I. Or did we actually want to go the other way around? Display the I, so there'll be five to begin with. Four, three, two, one. And then launch. Okay, that that should be fine. That should be cool. Let's 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 watch it go. Let's watch it drive. I kind of like the loop. That that was nice. A three, two, one, go. Launching away. We are beginning to roll. This is looking good. We are traveling in the right direction as well. That that was something I was a little bit worried about. Oh no! It turns out you can't you can't do that. You can't hit the the major time warp. I didn't mean to anyway. I actually wanted to hit this times three. Uh, and here we go. This is where we start to pick up some real speed as we roll down the hill. Eight, nine, ten. Uh, Fourteen is the number we are looking. for for okay 14 meters per second and continuing to go maybe maybe what i should have done is put some sort of program on this particular machine that could detect that we have done the thing that we needed to do and then stop because the next thing that's going to happen whilst i am almost all in about it is to jump off the end here we, we exceeded 28 meters per second that was pretty fast but the uh, the the drop is long the wheels survive. 
But Will survived. Oh, great. I, actually, I'm really about that. But I think with that, I am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you guys next time. Where we're going to be pushing for orbit and trying to fly through a series of checkpoints with a, an aeroplane with an autopilot not manually controlled. So I will see you then. Oh, when we're going to do that. Bye. <laughs>